In this lesson, we'll cover the material wrapper. First, let's start with an interactive render. And you'll see here that we've given this model an appearance of almost being a physically built model in the real world. Now in this lesson, we'll use the wrapper material to control the GI generated by the surface here. This is common when you want to mix something like, say, this model into a real world photograph. So let's go ahead and try that out. First, let's go to the V-Ray Asset Editor, click on the Settings tab, and click on the Environment dropdown. For the background, instead of using black, let's go ahead and use a bitmap. Go ahead and pick the one that's in your Assets folder called backplate.jpg and click Open. Next, down where it says UVW, twirl that down, and let's switch this to UVW Gen Environment, since we're using it for the environment, and notice the mapping type. Instead of it being spherical, drop this menu down, and we're gonna use screen. Then go ahead and click the back button. You'll notice here that this picture is far too dull in the background, so let's brighten it up. We can do that using the multiplier here next to background. I happen to know that 60 should be quite good. We'll want to override this picture's ability to do a few things. For example, we don't want this picture to handle GI, so we'll override that. And we don't want it to handle reflection, so we'll override that as well. Okay, so we've got the photo in the background and we've overridden some things so the photo is not affecting things that it shouldn't. But now we need to handle the tabletop material here to get it to match the table in the photo underneath. To do that, let's go over to the Materials tab. And right now we're using something called Ground Material for the plane that's beneath our model. But we're gonna use a new material here. So go ahead and click down here on Add Material and let's use the Wrapper Material. With the Wrapper Material, go up to the top where it says Base Material and let's flip this option down to ground material. And then let's go ahead and set the plane here by flipping this menu in, in SketchUp, using the Select tool to select the ground plane, and then applying the wrapper to that selection. With the wrapper applied, let's go ahead and fly out this menu again. And down here where it says matte, go ahead and check that box on. And you'll notice immediately that wrapper material helps us match the color a bit better. But we lost our shadows. So we need to also check on shadows here. Now we're getting those shadows back on. Now we can affect the shadow brightness up here where it says shadow brightness and a value of one. Notice that if you go a little bit to the right, the brightness actually corresponds to them getting stronger or darker. And then of course, to the left, we'll have the opposite effect. I'll go ahead and set it back to a value of one. Now often what you'll wanna do is use the wrapper material so that you can create a rendering in V-Ray that then you use to composite on this photograph in another program like Photoshop. So you can have more control over the realism. But there's one more thing you'd need to do first to set that up. And we can see that if we go over to the frame buffer and we click here to see the alpha channel, you can see here that we're not getting any information about the shadows. And so those shadows wouldn't come over if we rendered a pass here and tried to composite it later. Back over in the asset editor, we can fix this by sliding the alpha contribution all the way down to negative one and checking on the effect alpha. Notice now you can see in the alpha channel, those shadows are beginning to render in. Once this is done rendering, you could go ahead and save all those channels. But the last thing, we've used the photograph to set things up to see if they look good. But when we actually create our final rendering to go out to something like a Photoshop, it's recommended that you render this on a black background so you don't get any artifacts at the edges of where you're rendering meets the photograph. 